<coughs> uh, we're going to talk this morning about proving things. Now, proving things in mathematics is a really big deal. That's why you've been doing it for so very long. It's one of the best things I love about mathematics that you actually can prove things. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, for the rest of time and history, no matter where you are in the universe, these things are true. That's different to every other field of knowledge that we have. For example, um, in science, when I was uh, your age, I was taught that atoms looked like this. And we had evidence for that model. Like, you know, there's the protons and neutrons in there, and then there's like these little electrons whizzing around and doing their thing. And then sometime after I left high school, like we knew this, but it just hadn't caught up to high school education yet. Um, sometime after high school, they were like, oh, by the way, uh, you know how we proved this before? Actually, that, that's totally not what atoms look like. They look like something completely different. Um, there's none of this like nice, uh, predictable sort of spinning around. There's more about, it's more like they're kind of, the electrons might be here, or they might be there, or they might actually be here and here, but no one really knows, and it's just kind of this cloud of unknowing. More Nicholas. So it's like, oh no, my whole world is collapsing around me. And the, the reason why that is, is not because science is wrong, but the model of knowing things in science is, we look at the evidence, and then we literally make something up that fits that evidence. And it look, if it works pretty close, then when we say that thing that we made up is what we call a model, right? And it, it can predict what happens in the world. This model can predict a lot of things, which is why we used it for so long. But once we discover new evidence that maybe uh, gives us a, a finer or a better understanding, we say, yeah, you know, let's, let's, let's ditch that. Um, even though we scientifically proved it before, um, science moves on. That's exactly what science does. In fact, that's its primary goal, to um, come up with better and better models and um, uh, advance our own knowledge of things, okay? And that is completely different. To when a mathematician proves something, it's true forever. That's why we study Pythagoras, despite the fact that he's centuries, millennia old, because the stuff he proved, like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, is just as true today as it was back then, and it will still be true forever, right? So that is why mathematicians make such a big deal out of proof. Now, most of the kinds of proof you've ever had to deal with are all actually really one kind of um, breed of proof, one species of proof. But there's a whole animal kingdom out there, as it were, of kinds of proof. Uh, and the one we're going to look at is proof by contradiction. So to understand that today, um, I want to contrast that to something that you already know to be true. X, Y, and Z, what do they add up to? 180, okay? Now, how do we know that to be true? How can we prove it? Let's just really quickly rehearse what the proof looks like, okay? Um, go ahead, go ahead and draw this. Um, probably the simplest way that I know to prove this is to put a construction on this, okay? The construction I'm going to make is a line through this angle that's parallel to the opposite side. I actually could do this construction whichever which way. It'll just be easier if we do it right way up. So I'm going to construct this line over here, which is parallel, okay? Now, if those lines are parallel, then I know some things about the angles that I've just created through this construction, okay? For instance, this angle over here, what's it equal to? Y. y. And the reason for it being Y is that... Good. You can see the relationship here between these two angles because you have these parallel lines. And likewise, you can say that this angle is Z, Z degrees, right? So for that reason, by definition, we say that angles on a straight line add to 180, but that X, Y, and Z is the same X, Y, and Z that are inside the triangle. So ta-da, I'm done, you know? Um, this is very different, by the way. I, I hope you guys have done the experiment where, and I, I say experiment very deliberately, where you can take a, oh, don't cut my cable, that'd be clever. You can take a triangle, any triangle. Have you done this before? I hope you've done it. Um, it's kind of like a, a staple of the mathematics classroom. You take your triangle, right? And then um, you can be even, even ruder than that. You just, just rip the, the triangle up into three pieces, so long as the pieces each have an angle in them, okay? And then if you put them, um, let's see how I do this. One, and then two and then three, you'll get the same straight angle that I just drew constructed on the board, 
Okay? The difference between this and what we've just done is that I just proved this 180 degrees for, for this particular triangle. And we could do this, you know, 10 times and we'd have a lot of examples. And that would constitute like the mechanism of scientific proof. Proof by example, proof by repetition. Okay? But in mathematics, we don't care about repetition. You can repeat something correctly a million times and it all looks good, but that doesn't constitute like the millionth and first time might disprove it, right? So that's why we use logic rather than example. Now, underneath where you've um, written that, I basically want you to get this structure. It's very simple. This is the way that we would describe the logical sequence of what has just happened, right? If we have some statements, A and B, if we know that one is true, then we use logic to infer that the other is true. Okay? <coughs> All of the proofs that we've um, done so far are like this. So <coughs> we wanted to prove that the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. What knowledge did we rest on to be able to do that? There was a few bits, but there was probably one important one. How, how did you know that this was y again? What knowledge did you use? That alternate angles, alternate angles, on on parallel lines are equal, right? So this is something which you've we've established to be true, right? Uh, and can be demonstrated very easily. And then we use that to get to here. Okay? Now proof by contradiction is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of doing this, like everything is true, everything is true, what you do is you assume that the thing you want is false, right? Now, for example, you might say, let's assume the angle sum of triangle is 181 degrees. Okay? If you assume that, you're going to run into problems because things will contradict themselves. Um, you'll run into like, oh wait, but these angles are 181, but we know that that can't be because they're all in a straight line. Okay? So therefore, um, underneath here what you want to write is, the structure of a proof by contradiction is as follows. Proof by Rather than doing this, right, and going um, forward, as it were, what you do is you take the statement you want to prove, that's B, right, um, and then say, assume that it's false. Assume B is false. Now, if, if this is really true, then this assumption is going to lead to some problems, okay, because it's, it's, not, it's not actually accurate. So because this is inaccurate, that's actually the way I'm going to say it, because this is inaccurate, we should be able to come up with a contradiction that results from it. Once we find that contradiction, we can say, wait, this is, this is all the logic worked out, so the problem mustn't be the logic, the problem must be where we started. Right? We assume B is false, well, B must be true, because we ran into this problem. The contradiction that you end up with is either one of like, fundamental logic, um, some pre-established fact, or something about like, some additional piece of information in the question, like this.